Good morning, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens, I'm in Kokkul, which is one of the most well-preserved, gorgeous, and pristine islands in Thailand. Uh, you'll find amazing jungle here and beaches, uh, delicious seafood, and today is gonna be an unforgettable day. We're gonna go around the island. Uh, we're gonna stop at some of the most beautiful places on the island, and this is gonna be a tour of Kokkul, and I am gonna share it all with you in this video right now. This is day eight, and this is the final day of our Eastern Provinces of Thailand food and travel tour. It's been an amazing trip, uh, and I'll have the, the, the links and the, and the entire playlist below so you can watch all the videos. In order to get to Kok Gut, yesterday actually we came from Gok Chang, but we drove our car to Gok Chang, so we had to uh, take the ferry back to the mainland. Uh, then we drove to a place called Lam Sok, which is the pier at the end of the peninsula to catch a ferry. We took a ferry, it's called Bun Siri, uh, which is a speed ferry service, but a big, pretty big boat, so it's not, not rough water. Uh, and it, that's about an hour and 15 minutes to get to Kok Kut Island. And then from there, you jump into the back of a Rot Song Tao, which is a, a truck transportation, and they drop you off at your hotel that you're staying at. Right now, we're gonna quickly have breakfast at the hotel, and then a driver will come to meet us, and we're gonna start cruising around the island. This is gonna be an unforgettable day. This is a gorgeous island. They have seriously good pineapple in Trat. Part of the reason why Kokkut is so nice and so calm and so peaceful is because you can't Whoa. you can't drive your own car to the island. They don't have a ferry to bring your car here. And they have Rotsong Tails, which are back of the truck pickups uh, that you can rent for the day. So we rented one for the day. We're gonna go around. It's looking a little rainy, uh, but you know, this is an island, so things can change drastically very quickly. I've read some figures that say Kokkut has a popular local population of somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 people, and so there's not a huge uh, need for demand for local restaurants. So we asked our driver to just bring us to a place that he eats for breakfast, uh, a local place. This is about as local as you can get in Kokkut. They have a number of different curries. It's, it's mostly Kao Kang, but they also have Kut Tiao. They also have noodles here. They have a couple interesting dishes, including a mushroom curry that we're gonna try. Uh, but this is a cool little spot. I'll begin with the Gengai Ban, which is a free-range chicken. Uh, there's some blood jelly in here as well. The chicken, uh, some pea eggplant, some... I think that could be... Oh yeah, these are definitely uh, one of the most common ingredients in Thra, uh, especially with curries, is Na Saparot, which is the, the pineapple crowns. I think that's what they're, they're using in there too. Mmm. Mmm. That is awesome. Mmm. You know what's unique about that? I can taste more of a dry spice blend in there. It tastes like cumin, um, which is coming in really nicely, along with those herbs, along with the kaffir lime leaves, along with the nasaparot, which is the, the pineapple crown. Um, it's a little bit spicy. It's really, really nicely flavored. That's an excellent curry. By far the most interesting dish to me that they had up front there is called Gang Het Samet. This is a type of mushroom curry that I haven't heard of before. Um, I think it's some type of a wild mushroom from the forest here. And look how thick that coconut milk is. That's like melted butter. Mm. Oh. oh, that's an insane mushroom. Okay, first let me start with the coconut cream. That's outrageously thick and creamy and rich. Um, it has a natural coconut sweetness to it with a little chili in there. And then you get to that mushroom. That mushroom has this like unbelievably slimy yet soft, very soft dissolve in your mouth texture. And that follows with a bitterness, a really nice bitterness that sort of overwhelms your mouth. I love, I love bitterness. Mm. 
That is sensational. Mm. You know what the texture of those mushrooms is like? It's almost like the texture of an oyster. Wait, did you taste it? Yeah. You like it? It's good, but cold. Cold, bitter. I was just asking them where those mushrooms come from, and conveniently located right there. It said they come from, they grow somehow on this tree. <laughs> After the leaves drop to the ground naturally, especially with rain, right? During like rain, they'll drop to the ground and then the mushrooms will grow out of the ground from that leaf. Something like that. Very cool mushroom, very amazing bitter taste to go with that coconut cream. I love it. They don't exactly have a restaurant name. I think maybe just the owner's name, but it's called Saloon. Uh, this is the front here. You'll see some green tarps hanging out front. What a, what a great little restaurant. And yeah, we got lucky with that mushroom curry. That is the type of dish that I, gets me pumped, that gets me excited. That was so good. A new flavor, a new mushroom to me. Uh, just right off the tree, right there. Oh man, that was delicious. Okay, we're moving on. And by the way, huge thank you to our driver for bringing us here. This is the type of jungle that you can imagine yourself swinging from tree to tree on a vine. Well, I, I, I like to imagine that. That would be a lot of fun. We're on our way to some really old big trees. The first tree is called Makayak. It's a huge, that means a huge maka tree. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a gigantic tree that just looks like it reaches to the sky. And the base of the tree is also quite gigantic. Wow. And then it kind of like V's off uh, midway up the tree. Then just a short distance away is another tree called Tonsai, which is a banyan tree. It's so eerie and so, so mystical. Both of the trees extremely gorgeous and what a pristine jungle. Yeah. Next up we're on our way to Gong Chao Waterfall, which is one of the most well-known waterfalls. does require a little bit of rock hopping to get to the, the main waterfall. Oh yeah, that water is perfectly refreshing. It's so quiet, it's so peaceful, it's beautiful, it's lush. Oh, this is fantastic. It's raining now, but that, wa that waterfall is definitely worth a visit, definitely worth a swim. I'm refreshed, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was great. Okay, we're on our way. Oh man, the camera is like soaking right now. We're driving next to a place called Kaurarop. I'm not exactly sure what it is. We'll find out. Ah, so at the top it's actually a shrine and it's a, like a naval shrine, I believe. <sighs> Next we're driving to another beach, it's called Bangbao. Oh man, this is one of the beaches I wanted to visit in Gokgut. This is 
it's it's a paradise beach wow there's some docks going out to fishing boats the water is crystal clear the palm trees this is an impressively beautiful beach i'm just going to take a walk out to the end of this dock to see the boats uh, and see the the clear water out there and then we we have to take a swim here there's no way you cannot And from here, we're gonna go to the fishing village. We're gonna hopefully find some amazing seafood. And that's also gonna, it looks incredible. That's one of the things I wanted to do most here. But this is the type of beach, I mean, you could just, you could just sit in this water all day long and not go anywhere. Oh, this is just, it, this is fabulous. This is so good. I tried to tell him to go, he said no. <laughs> he doesn't wanna go. Yeah. Micah just wants to stay here all day. Part of what makes that beach so spectacular is that it's so quiet, so peaceful. We just got dropped off at Aoyai, which is a traditional fishing village. It's on the west coast of Kokut and also on the south side. We're gonna walk around for a little bit and then we're gonna eat some seafood. It's actually quite a decently large village, uh, all on stilts, a fishing village. Yeah, you just keep walking back and uh, there are houses, there are little restaurants, but uh, most of this community is all, is all fishing. Wow, look at that school of fish. They have a number of different seafood restaurants. We've chosen one that's called Chontisa. You can choose your own seafood. They have some tanks going with different shellfish and, and variety of things. And then they have these giant nets just filled with fish. I ordered a couple of unique things that I've never tried before. We also ordered some kind of, it's some type of a slipper lobster. It's just straight sea to table dining. Uh, they have herbs growing here. The, the ocean breeze is in your face and I'm hungry. A couple of the dishes have just arrived and still waiting on a couple of dishes, but let's start. This one is muktad gatiam. It's uh, squid fried with a garlic sauce. Look at that rich sauce. And look at how they've cut up the squid uh, into like it looks like a pineapple. My bench is a little bit high for this table, so I'm sitting way up here. I gotta, gotta lean over. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that, that's awesome. Mmm. You've got the garlic sauce and black pepper in there. It's a little bit sweet, um, nice and salty, and then like, like, the texture of the squid is like, it's like bouncy, and almost like jellyish and really tender. Next dish is called Genkua Saparot Gung. Um, this is a, a type of curry. You can see what what you have to admire is just how thick and curdled that coconut milk is, paired with what I believe is the mankung, which is the the shrimp uh, tamale head oil. got really rich coconut milk in there. You can taste that oil of the shrimp. It looks really orange and red, but it doesn't actually, it, it's not spicy. In Thai, it's called hoi ngā, and ngā is rambutan, the fruit, the hairy, spiky, rambutan little fruit. Uh, and so you can see the shell does sort of look like that too. And I just looked it up in English. It's some type of a rock shell mollusk. Oh, another name for it is a murex. Uh, which is a genus of medium to large sized predatory tropical sea snails. I mean, it's served as sashimi, it's served raw, but they might just quickly flash blanch it. They have sliced it quite thin. Uh, and before using any of the sauce, we gotta we got take a, just a bite of the straight. Mmm. 
Oh, oh that has an amazing uh, like crispness to it. Wow. And also quite a, quite a nice natural sweetness as well. Actually, as you keep on chewing, it almost has a nutty taste to it too, but plus it's sweet. Okay, we gotta dip in the Nam Jim seafood next. Oh, with that sauce. Oh, what a what an enhancement. That sauce, um, again, I think Trat style, they use salt. Maybe instead of fish sauce, but you can taste the pungent chilies and garlic in there. It's just balanced by a hint of sweetness and spicy. It's delicious. Dip into the soy sauce. Mm. Oh, that's a dish. I must have gotten a different piece of the shell from a different side or something because that's it's more tender without that crunch. Totally different texture. Next up for these type of slipper lobsters, which in Thai are called kangadan. Jamaica, kangadan. And these are deep fried with garlic sauce as well. They kind of have a little bit of an alien appearance with like an armored shell around them. And I think what you can do, oh, they've sort of like cut them in half. Oh, oh, so you open it, but that's like an extremely hard, hard shell. Um, and I think you take off the head. You've got this tail, which is like a, a mini lobster tail. Wow, that's quite a quite an intense shell. Oh, there we go, yes. Okay, I got it all out in one bite. Insanely delicious. Mm. It tastes like lobster. It has a little more of an earthy tone to it though. Last dish we got is called hoi pa, which is, they look like giant clams, uh, but they, I didn't know they were gonna deshell them for that. They shelled them for us. These are, that's a whole, an entire spoonful. Um, and then fried it up with some, some kind of a curry paste and uh, basil. Wow. That's kind of on the chewy side. It does. It tastes like a clam, like a, like a, a giant clam. Um, and then that's in kind of a nutty, chili sauce. As we're eating, it started raining, drizzling, uh, but still the the atmosphere is spectacular. This one is just a little guy, but I know it would be incredible with that seafood sauce on it. Oh yeah. Oh, what a natural scoop. Those slipper lobsters are incredible. Uh, and really, really flavorful. Really sweet. I love the texture and with that sauce. That is incredibly delicious. And really, there are like at least three different sections that have totally different textures and sweetnesses. That piece that I just had. That might be from like the center or something because it's it's the sweetest and the softest. It's, it's really tender. Finished with that seafood meal and I have to tell you one of my like indicators of kind of iffy food is when they put an orchid next to your plate of food. I mean, I mean that's that's of course just a general statement but it's kind of true that they, they kind of tone down the flavors when they do that type of thing. Uh, but they did that at this restaurant and it actually it was quite good. The food was excellent. The seafood is no doubt extraordinarily fresh and I am excited because they had a few different things that unique things that I've never had like that that predatory rock shell murex We made it back to Klong Prao, back to the beach where we started off this morning. What a fantastic day. Oh, let me sit up a little bit. It turned out to be a perfect day. We got a little bit of rain, but that's okay. We got a little bit of sunshine. We had some cloudy weather, but Kokut uh, is truly a paradise island. I mean, the combination of beaches, waterfalls, thick, lush jungle, uh, seafood, crystal clear beaches, I probably already said that once, uh, but it, it's really a, a gorgeous island. It's, it's also nice because it's quiet, it's laid back, and to be honest, uh, there's not a lot of food options. Most people, most people actually just come to this island, they stay at their resort or their hotel, they eat the food at their hotel and maybe go out to do a little bit of sightseeing, but this is the type of island that you can come 
to sit and do nothing. And that not only brings us to the end of this video about Kokku Island, but this also brings us to the end of this entire series. And if you haven't watched the entire series of this eastern region of Thailand food and travel tour, uh, there are a total of eight videos. I'll leave all the links in the description box below, but you can uh, check out and, and watch the entire playlist. It's been, uh, the entire eastern region of Thailand is a, is a region that, for me, I think the food is not, is very underrepresented. Even in Bangkok, you won't find that much eastern Thai, Thai food. Uh, and so it's been a learning experience, some incredibly delicious food. The seafood stands out, some of the best seafood I've had in Thailand. Uh, the people are great. We've been to villages. We started off in Chantaburi, we came to Trat, we went to Kok Chang, and then finally ending in Kok Kut. And it's been a, an extremely memorable trip. I just want to say a huge thank you for watching this video, for watching this entire series of videos. And I want to personally invite you, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you click subscribe now and also click the little bell icon so that you get notified of the next video that I publish. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Kok Kut and I will see you on the next video.